Today we are going to make a project I called Swirled Architecture. This video is going to take you through step by step how to mix monochromatic colors and how to swirl your paint like Vincent van Gogh. It also demonstrates how to put your project all together. You will need paper, pencil, eraser, a palette or plate, palette knife, large and small brush, water cup, paint towel or rag, acrylic paint, photo or reference for a famous piece of architecture. To begin, always write your name on the back of your paper. I am very lightly sketching where I will want my stars in my sky by drawing some circles randomly in my sky. This will be a guideline later for where to paint my swirls. I am also drawing a very low horizon line. I need it to be low so that I can draw my structure or building later on as a silhouette. A silhouette is like a shadow or outline of something. We will not be drawing the inside details. I drew mine so light that you couldn't really see it on the video. So on this one, I pressed hard. Don't press this hard or your paint will show through. If you did press this hard already, go to Crazy Town with your eraser. Your eraser lines will be sufficiently visible to paint from. We are going to mix some tints and shades to paint this picture. Oh snap, did you notice how the background changed? Hey, pay attention. This video has honestly been fail central. I tried three times to record this at school, and the color mixing part is the only part that survived. So the rest is in the comfort of my dining room. If the iPad tells you you are running out of memory, don't just delete your old videos. Delete them from the trash too. Ready your palette with a bob of the color you would like for your background. It can be any color except black or white. Remember, in art, black is all the colors, and white is the absence of color. Then add a blob of white, and the smallest bit of black you have ever blobbed in your life. With your palette knife, make a new blob of white on the edge of your plate. Scrape it super clean. Then wipe it with your rag. With your clean palette knife, take a small blob of your color and add it to the white. Whenever you are mixing colors, you always add the darker color to the lighter one. Notice also, I am mixing with the tip of my knife and trying to keep the mixed pile relatively small. I do not want to spread this paint all over the place. I take another blob of white that is slightly smaller clean my knife, and a slightly larger blob of color. I want to try and make a darker tint this time. When I make a shade, I need to start with my color. I take a blob of my color first, clean my knife, then add the smallest amount of black to it. Black can take over super fast, so be wary. You can always add more of the dark colors. It is nearly impossible to get it back light. You are better off just starting over. Artists call this setting the palette, having all of your colors ready before you start your piece. This is also the point in the movie where I got a phone call from my daughter asking me to come pick her up from cross country practice. Hello? Oh, why? Okay. I'm in the middle of making a video. I couldn't even finish my third attempt at this film. Back home. Although it is impossible to see, I am filling in my white circles with white paint on white paper. I am not washing my brush. This is artistic preference, but I next chose my absolute lightest tint in painted circles around all of my white circles. I overlapped and made sure the white mixed with my tint a little. Uh -huh. 
After I made the circle outlines, I added a few swirls using the same tint. You can't see it in the video, but my paint was a little gloppy from being saved. Make sure if you have to save your paint, your Ziploc bag is sealed. I traced my swirls and circles next with my second darkest tint. The stars got together and extinguished the moon and sun. I used pure hue, pure color as my third color. Again, I did not wash my brush and let my colors overlap and mix as I swirled. There is no right or wrong way to swirl. Just don't go to crazy town. I want to see variety in tints and shades. I used my shade last. I knew that the shade would create a lot of emphasis in areas, so I tried to use it sparingly and throughout the entire piece. The orchestra conductor has been captured and tried and killed. Always take your brush for a walk at the bottom of your water cup and pinch it dry when you are done. Oops. We forgot a color when we set our palette. We need a color for our land or ground. I chose green. I am going to make one tint in one shade only. Again, I will start with the lighter colors. Blob of green. I made a blob of white. I added a wee bit of green to the white. cleaned my knife, and an itty bitty bitty bit of black to my green. Around the dinner table a family says grace, and the son sees the secret signal on his sister's face. I am being random with using the tint and pure color. I am not washing my brush, but I am still keeping the colors separate instead of mixing it all together in one big crazy town mess. The green shade is not as dark as the pink shade, but still I added that last. Finally, I give my brush a walk at the bottom of my water cup and pinch my bristles dry. What comes next? I have chosen to draw the Eiffel Tower on my dried painting. Voila, I have a dried one already. It's almost as if I did this video three times or something. I am using my regular pencil to sketch the Eiffel Tower onto my painting. I am drawing super light. However, if I make a mistake, I can erase it because I am drawing so lightly. This is a silhouette, so I do not need to be drawing all of these details. However, the Eiffel Tower and some of the other architecture and structures we have looked at may have negative space you would like to include in your drawing. I've shaded in some areas with pencil, so I know what I will want to paint black. I'm tracing with Sharpie so that I can have a border for my paint lines. I want to try and keep my paint lines crisp so people know what I'm trying to paint, but I also want it to look like a painting, not marker. So brush strokes are okay, like the background. Sometimes when I have very small areas to paint, I hold my brush like a pen. I hold it real close to the bristles on the metal part. That's called a ferrule. This gives you a little more control. 
Did you notice how I dipped my bristles, then kind of wiped them off a little on the plate? Especially when you are painting small areas, you never want to have globs on there. Uh, and even though the water is filthy by now, I am still going to give my brush a walk at the bottom of the cup and pinch it dry in my rag. It's not the water that cleans your brush, it's the rag. Well, I am pleased with my final design. I hope yours is a masterpiece. Good luck!